This documentary is funded by Star Ghana Foundation, Media General, and School for Life. <laughs> In the middle of northern Ghana, there exists a tune of hope. Amongst the peaceful nature, there's a bright light showing the way to education for those who have not gone to school yet. In some communities here, education was once a distant dream a luxury reserved for the privileged few. But despite the difficulties, things started to change. A special program called Complementary Basic Education CBE by School for Life appeared, giving hope and inspiration to the kids. Meet Ismail Mohammed, a determined 14-year-old girl from Jiang in the Nanton district of the northern region. Despite never having set foot in a formal classroom, she's determined to make a difference in her life. With a heavy pan balanced on her head, she heads out to sell goods while her friends attend school. It's not her choice, but her parents believe as the best path for her. After finishing her day of selling, Ismail rushes home and hurries to an evening class in her community, the complementary basic education by School for Life. When she arrived, classes were already underway. I sell because my parents want me to, but I go to school because I want to become a teacher. All these young ones are experiencing a taste of education before transitioning to formal primary school. My name is Habib Mohamed Mahi, and I'm a facilitator for Zion community. How to write is a problem to the children, and even how to speak or how to read, all these things are a problem to our children. So we manage it, and they say we should use nine months. So when we use nine months, at least how to write, some of them they can write very well. Even the reading too, some of them can read very well. This idea is helping them because even the we are we say we are Dagwambes. Even Dagbana, how to speak Dagbana is a problem to our children. So when we start the class, they now know that this class is very important. The complementary basic education program by School for Life in Tamale targets out-of-school children aged 8 to 14 in Northern Ghana. Though a nine-month intensive program, it equips them with basic literacy and numeracy skills to facilitate their integration into formal primary schools. In 
Dimabi, located in the Tamale Talon district of the northern region, Haruna Abdul Waris and Abu Ayuba have been responsible for tending for the cattle. Both of them were forced to drop out of school by their grandfathers in order to accompany the cattle to the bush each day. The blistering hot sun won't deter them from obeying their parents. As the sun begins to set and the evening brings warmth to Dimabi DA Primary School, children gather for their CBE lessons. Haruna and Ayuba have returned home after a tiring day, but that won't deter them from coming back for their lessons. Their voices sound hateful, like a choir singing. I was in school up until primary four when my grandfather made me stop to guard the cattle. Whenever I see my colleagues dressed up for school, I feel like I want to be part of them. But my grandfather will not allow that to happen. So I have taken advantage of the CBE program and go to class in the evening when I return from the bush. I feel really sad when I see my friends in school and I can't join them. I am hoping I can successfully complete the CBE program so I can proceed to formal school and fulfill my dream of becoming a teacher in the future. In fact, today the class was very impressive because you can see that all the students were present and they were all serious. They see that they are not just wasting their energy for nothing. They mean there are people around supporting their classes. So can't you see that the performance, they were all concentrating on whatever we are doing. Most parents don't, don't want their girls to come to school because they don't see education to be something important. So what we normally do is that we normally go to parents to tell them that about the importance of education. They need to send their child, children to school. Their problem is that most of the graduates, they are at home doing nothing. So we let them know that being to school does not necessarily get a job to do. But when you just get a knowledge, a knowledge that from people cannot teach you, knowledge that you can use to separate things from, tip things for yourself without consulting anybody. So, but so do you, most parents allow their kids to come go to school. Looking at this community, most teachers or most government workers, they have passed through this school for life. They have passed through, and there are, are many. Let me see, if they are not, there are about 10, 10 of them. They pass through the school for life. So the, the school for life have helped the community a lot. In Guno, located in the Nanton district of the northern region of Ghana, a significant number of children have transitioned from CBE and are now enrolled in formal education. Yes. What is it? Plants. So I want you to start with one part of your plant. Yes, one. Even though most of them are still struggling to speak the English language, they are able to understand it and are gradually improving by day. I wasn't attending school. Instead, I was responsible for taking care of the animals. When evening classes were established, I enrolled and now I have successfully transitioned into formal schooling. It's my dream to become a teacher one day. I used to accompany my parents to their soya beans farm and later I was enrolled in the CBE class. Today, 
I'm in class 5 and I aspire to become a nurse. The Girls Club is a platform also created by School for Life for girls who transition from the CBE program. It enables them to connect and share ideas together. Zainab is a beneficiary. My name is Zainab. I attend Gunot DA Primary School. I'm doing my best to become a nurse in future. I do not absent myself from school. The program has been very nice because uh, those who have been transitioning to the normal school are doing well. Though we have some challenges with regards to the English language, but some of them are popping up. It's complementing a lot because um, uh, we look at uh, school dropouts, that is basically um, children uh, between the ages of um, 8 to 16 years who have dropped out of school and they are being targeted and they go through the CBA then from there they are transitioned into the former school so um, with that enrollment increases without it helps in gender parity because um, most of these uh, targets are, what, are girls that uh, who are normally who actually dropped from school maybe due to kayai or other issues in the first call at um, school for life came in to help in this process we had about 750 learners in the first cohort who had been transitioned into the main school. There's no doubt uh, there has been a positive impact on the CBA. Uh, CBE. Uh, notably, it has reduced the uh, uh, school dropout in the area. Uh, it to any time any student drops out, that becomes the end of the education of that person. But the, the coming in of the uh, CBE, all these children are brought back to the, the mainstream educational leader. So I think that it has been positive. At Yangpala Junior High School, Adamu has shown remarkable improvement in her educational journey, aspiring to achieve prominence. My name is Suleimana Adam. I am in Yangpala DA Junior High 1. It is my dream to become either a teacher or a doctor in the future. Thank you so much to School for Life for making my future promising. School for Life has undeniably been a beacon of hope and support for these young ones in the northern part of Ghana, offering them a sign of hope and light each day. The CB program uh, is a very nice program introduced by the government of Ghana and since uh, it started in Tolan district uh, we have seen much improvement in that in the program a lot of out of school growing children will have been enrolled into the program and by the end of the cycle uh, majority or good number of them have been transitioned to the former schools and they are doing much very well at the former uh, school and we hope to monitor to see to the uh, level where these children will, will go. We also hope to ensure that these children that have been transitioned to former schools do not uh, drop out again but continue to, to the level that we all wish for them to reach in terms of their what, education. So. Just to say, the program is a, is, a, is, a, is a nice program and it has helped the children a lot. In the Tolan district, there, are, there were a lot of uh, out of school uh, children who are not in school or who have been dropped out due to one reason or the other. But since the program has started, we have seen much improvement and we are now seeing that though there are still dropouts, but uh, since the program has started, we have seen much improvement and the, 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 the level of dropout is, has 
it has reduced drastically. Our partnership with School for Life have been so uh, good and we are seeing a much of progress. Some parents speak highly of how School for Life has positively impacted their children's lives. I am thrilled to see how much my daughter has transformed and developed a love for reading. I am grateful that the CBE program provided her with the opportunity to transition into formal education. I'm delighted to see my three children attending school regularly and completing their assignments. Before enrolling in the CBE program, they had never attended school, so it brings me great joy to witness their educational progress. Through the gift of complementary basic education, these children are empowered to script their own destiny to chase dreams that once seemed out of reach. Sure. Musa Mohammed Gausu and Haruna Abdurrahim, both beneficiaries of the CBE program, are now working together. So from 2003 to 2004, that was the period uh, we did a, that was nine months, nine months of studying with uh, School for Life. Then we were formally transitioned to the formal school at the basic level. Fortunately, when I went, I was fortunate to be, or to be kept at primary four. Currently, I'm the district manager of, of health insurance for Nantong. And indeed, uh, School for Life has really impacted on our lives. So if not because of that intervention, I might have been probably somewhere else, not working formally or anywhere else. Or probably I would also join uh, my colleagues who did not have the privilege to join the School for Life, who are now at a, let me see, Kaya and all, who, all those, uh, those who have traveled to the southern part to also seek for better condition of all green pastures. School for Life has indeed transformed my life. School for Life, from darkness to light. As I said now, we spent nine months for benefiting out from School for Life. Unfortunately, on our part, then we joined the formal education. That was 2006 or 2005, that about. We joined 2005 uh, at the formal school level. And then that is where we started picking ourselves in terms of writing, reading, Everything concerning about education, we're not able to even write, but through School for Life, we may be able to do something in terms of writing, reading. Then furthermore, we move further to um, P6. We join uh, P4, from P4 to P6, and then we then move further to JSS level. From JSS level, we wrote that was 2010. And then we move further to the SSS level. At the SSS level, we then move further to the tertiary level. That was Tamale Technical University. I pursued my course uh, accountancy. That was 2015. So I completed uh, Tamale Technical University. That was 2018. And so uh, this year that I has the opportunity to join this particular um, NHIS scheme and I'm uh, accounts assistant. Uh, School for Life has indeed transformed my life to whom I am today and the School for Life from darkness to light.
I started school for life at my hometown called Dabakshi. In fact, school for life has helped me a lot. I completed around 1997. By then, I was enrolled into primary school at Kataraga MA Primary. And I was, I was sent to Basic 3. In fact, Schools for Life has done a lot, or it has helped me a lot in my life. I can't even say it. I'll just, I just want to say, School for Life, now in Chile, I want to tell the donors and everybody who is in support of School for Life that they should do well and continue it. Hadn't been because of School for Life, by now I would have been in the house doing nothing or being useless. School for Life has really done a lot for me. I started my educational journey through School for Life. That was 1999. It started as 25 pupils in class. That was October 1999. By the time we completed School for Life in nine months time, that was in June, we were left with 23 people. Out of the 23, we were all put into class three, Kumun LA Primary, the now Kumun DA Primary School. That's where we were instituted into as a form of, of um, formal education. And I proceeded to Tamale Senior High School where I read science. The, before I even get to Tamale Senior High, after BEC, I was the best student in Kumun District. So I was selected to represent Kumun District at regional level for President Independence Day Award. And at the regional level, I was also chosen as the best boy graduate for the BEC in 2007. So in 2007, I was the best boy graduate of BEC for Northern Region. So I was given presidential award in 2007 to have my secondary school free at Tamar School. So from Tamar School, I moved to the University of Ghana, where I read Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. So after six years of education, I was posted to Techima Municipal as the Municipal Veterinary Officer. From there, I resigned and joined School of Veterinary Sciences, University for Development Studies, where they train veterinary nurses, where I am currently. If not for School for Life, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to be in formal school, let alone be at an institution where students are being trained. Currently, I'm part of the School of Veterinary Sciences, University for Development Studies, training people to become veterinary nurses. And I said, School for Life is the basis for which I have, I'm standing now. Around the age of 15, I was in my house with a brother, a senior brother, when uh, somebody came to the house and told us that he was registering, registering people for uh, uh, a literacy class called School for Life. So we asked him if we could also join the registration. He said, yes, we can. So we let him add our names to it. So we asked him when we will start the classes. So he, he told us that <coughs> we will start it around October. That was in 2001. So around October, we started. So we did the classes for nine months. Then we graduated. After the graduation, we proceeded to the former school. Currently, I'm doing my MPhil in biotechnology at the University, of, at the University for Development Studies, Nyangpala campus. As the sun set over the arid hills of northern Ghana, the stories of resilience, tenacity and hope told here leave an everlasting impact on our hearts. In our quest as an organization to ensure that all children uh, within the age category of uh, enrolling in school are in school or accessible to basic education, we pioneered the functional literacy program which is now known as the Complementary Basic Education Program. Um, as an organization, we work with relevant state actors and like Mande Civil Society organization to ensure that every Ghanaian child have access to equitable quality basic education. And that is why we 
as uh, dating back to 1995, came out with the flagship program uh, known as the Functional Literacy Program, which I indicated earlier, uh, is now referred to as the Complementary Basic Education Program. The government of Ghana uh, has adopted the program uh, as a result of our consistent advocacy effort to ensure that this program is replicated across the country. The program has largely been, as it were, supported or funded by the donor, international donor community, largely. Now, we are advocating for the in-country, like local financing of the program. And by local financing, we are referring to the central government and the local assemblies, especially in assemblies or districts and municipalities where out-of-school children population is actually uh, in great numbers. We are advocating by collaborating with other civil society organizations to ensure that the local financing of the program is actually uh, something that is really taken serious. And uh, yes, there are challenges because um, uh, this process of, um, of ensuring that uh, the program is actually financed by, by us, and by us I mean as a Ghanaian rather than heavily dependent on the donor world, has been bedeviled with some challenges. Uh, the local assemblies, though, are willing to support, but they have limited resources to ensure that this program, I mean, they are able to really uh, uh, fund the program. A program like this, that has since 1995, has effectively uh, successfully targeted out of school children and enrolled them into school is something that as a country we need to really pay important uh, attention to uh, because it has proven to be a model that is effective in targeting the out of school children and supporting them to be enrolled in school. So, from the dusty trails where children once tended to cattle to the bustling classrooms where dreams are natured, the journey of education transforms lives. Through the commitment of organizations like School for Life and the dedication of parents and students alike, barriers are shattered and futures are rewritten. As the credits roll, we are reminded that Every child's story is a narrative of possibility, and with education as the right guiding light, the future is boundless. School for life, from darkness to light. Godwin Asidewa. TV3. This documentary is funded by Star Ghana Foundation, Media General, and School for Life.